Welcome back to Young Patriots Corner. We are excited with our new content we have here for our kids in our community, our young citizens, to learn more about how our city is governed and meet our city leaders. First, we had Mayor Stanley on the program, and today we have uh, Commissioner Don Tips. We are so thankful that you are here to interview with us today. And I have Brooklyn Callenger. She is a student at Olson Park who is about to wrap up her elementary years and head to middle school next year. And she will be conducting our interview with Mr. Tips today. So, Brooklyn, I'm going to turn it over to you. Okay, well, thank you for taking your time to do this. Um, and here's your first question. Did you participate in any sports when you were in school? What was your favorite sport and why? Great question. So yes, I did participate in sports. Um, in fact, I enjoyed sports, very competitive. So earlier, I participated in, gosh, thinking back, uh, soccer, baseball, basketball, and football. So uh, a lot of them. And then, you know, I think these days it's a little tougher because you kind of have to choose because there's, you know, a little bit more specialty. Um, but a long time ago when I was in school, uh, you got to kind of do everything. So it was so it was beneficial. So now what was my favorite? Um, well, I don't think I said ran track, but I think track was my favorite because I enjoyed it because it was an individual. So I love the team sports, and you learn so much through a team uh, sporting event and participating because you rely on each other. But I enjoyed challenging myself. So in track, it was very individual. You know, it was you against the clock. So I'd have to say probably track was my favorite. Okay, it sounds like you're pretty athletic. I, I love athletics, and even, even now, being old, I still love it. Next question is, what was your favorite subject in school? How has that subject helped you? Um, gosh, I would say actually math. I really enjoyed math and even algebra uh, and geometry. So even as one of calculus and trig, not so much. Um, but math and algebra, I enjoyed it a lot because, again, it made sense. Like there was a there was a right way to do it, you know, and you could figure it out. It's very concrete, um, and it's helped me. Algebra and math has helped, I would say, in every field uh, that I've been in. Um, I I was put myself through school. And I uh, worked in a lumber yard uh, going through college. So it helped me quite a bit uh, in that helping because people would come to me and ask me how to figure out how much, whether it's lumber or paint or whatever they needed, and to figure out square footage or board feet or anything like that. I was able to use that math and that algebra. So when you get into algebra and you don't think you're going to use it, you will. So I it's good. To, I have to agree with you there. I think math is mine as well. Good. Okay, next question. What was the what is the most fun holiday and why? The most fun holiday, gosh. Um, hmm. Gosh. Okay, it's between two. Um, I would say either Christmas or July fourth. Um, both pretty significant events, right? We're gonna celebrate the birth of Jesus and then we're gonna celebrate the birth of our nation. Um can I say two? Can yeah, I say both? <laughs> okay, so I'm going to say I'm going to say both of those uh, for those reasons, but also in on July Fourth, you know, we get to go to the pool and we get to have family over and cook out, so we get to enjoy those things. Kind of the same thing for Christmas that it's it's about family getting together, um, and we never really want to lose focus of what either one of those are. You know, we can get caught up in the uh, fireworks or the watermelon or the you know, all the things, you know, cooking out and swimming and that type of deal on July 4th, but to remember what it's really about. So we always try to make it about what it really is, right? Same way with Christmas. You know, we want to focus on, hey, we're celebrating the birth of Jesus. That's what we're doing. But through that, we get to come together and uh, have family, share, you know, be able to uh, give, you know, be able to give those gifts and do those things and share family time. So I would say both. Both of those would be my favorite. Wow, that's a really great and sweet explanation, and I both love July 4th and Christmas. Seems like we're kind of similar, Brooklyn. <laughs> yeah. Okay, next question. What's the most interesting thing about Amarillo? Wow, the most interesting thing about Amarillo. Um, I would say, I said she couldn't zing me. She might hear. <laughs> uh, the most interesting thing 
gosh. Um, there's so many. Um, I think one thing that's just there that we don't really ever look at is Amarillo, we're, I like to say we're kind of on an island. Um, we are a mid-sized city, and we don't have a lot of resources near us. Uh, we don't have a lot of cities that we can go to if something were to happen to go pull from or use or you know someone else come to help us. Um, so I think it 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 provides an opportunity for us to be self sufficient, and we have to be um, in an interesting way that most other cities don't have to be. Most other cities have cities fairly close to them uh, that they can pull from resources, uh, people, things like that. Amarillo, we don't. So we're we're kind of by ourselves. So we tend to rely. We we we're forced to re- rely on our resources and each other. I think a little bit more. So because of that, I think we it it fosters good people. You know, we're we're it, we will we're willing to lend a helping hand. Not to say that other cities don't, but I think maybe a little bit more here than uh, elsewhere. Wow, I never really thought about that. Okay, now um, what is your favorite restaurant in Amarillo? Yeah, you're gonna get me in trouble. <laughs> wow. Um, I'm going to say um, we really enjoy a place called Cask and Cork. Oh. And the main reason is it's kind of like home. So at one time we had five of our children working there. Okay, so they couldn't make us very mad because if they did and they quit working there, they'd be in a big pinch. Um, but we like it not only because of the food. I think the food's amazing, but the people. Uh, again, we, we know a lot of the people that work there, you know, the owner and the manager and several servers um so it's kind of great to go in there and and it's kind of like home you know we get to hug on people see people and even regulars that eat there uh, we've developed relationships with them so food's amazing and it's very consistent um but it's more the environment you know that it's it's kind of like home because we know people Uh, our family really loves Cousin Cork we kind of we go there um sometimes like for holidays or like Easter and stuff yeah that's good okay now kind of related to what we were saying do you have any children and will you tell us about your children okay i have um i have four children and two stepchildren okay i'm gonna add to that we have four grandchildren so yeah so we have old (laughs) children right um so what was your second question do i have children and then what what did you ask um will you tell us about them gosh might be here the whole time if i told you all about them (laughs) So four of them are married. Four of the six are married. Um, so, you know, that's expanding our family, you know, even that much more. Um, and then one couple, um, gosh, I, I, I could go on and on for days and days. But, you know, they age from 31 to 22, okay? Um, we've got one couple, Megan and Taylor. They've got two grandbabies, so they uh, have... Noah and Brooks, okay, and then we've got another couple, Austin and Samara. They've got Sage, and then we have Merrick and Sydney, and they have Addie, Adeline, but she goes by Addie. Um, so we love it. Um, we try to get together uh, as much as possible with all six. Thankfully, they all live here except uh, one couple. One couple lives in Lubbock, um, but we've had them spread out. One couple lived in Manhattan, New York, for a while. One was in College Station. Uh, two were in Lubbock, but they've all come home, which is a huge blessing. So every the first Sunday of each month, we have family dinner. So everybody's invited over, you know, and we, we cook at the house. And so we have uh, family dinner so that we can all reconnect, you know, because we get busy. All of us get busy. Um, we try to spend individual time with each couple, you know, and each one. Um, but this is kind of a set deal that the first Sunday of each month that, you know, we come together. So our youngest, um, he throws, kind of an interesting fact, he throws the javelin uh, at Stephen F. Austin. So he's a college athlete. And, you know, and then we've got everybody in between. I, like I said, I go on and on about what they do, <laughs> how proud I am of them. Um, but it's great having a big family. You know, having six is a lot, um, but it's great. Again, at Christmas and those holidays, Everybody comes together, so family is so important. And just to stay connected because we can all get so busy. But again, not to lose focus 
of staying connected. You know, it's so important to stay connected. Sounds like a very crowded uh, family (laughs) get-together. It is. We're going on a big family vacation, actually, on June 14th. We're taking them all. So there's 15 of us that we're going to go. So, yeah, we're going to have a big family vacation. That sounds really fun. Yeah. Okay, now we're going to get to some more talking about city council. Okay. What do you like best about being on the city council? I like being, uh, feeling a part of the city. Um, you know, uh, a lot of the things that you talked about, right? And I said, well, hey, why are you interested in that? You know, it, it, I'm curious. So a lot of, a lot of the same reason is um, I can help guide our city. Um, I feel like I'm, I'm good at it. You know, I can do it. I can uh, put the time. The biggest thing is I was called to do it. I'm going to say that, you know, one big thing for me is prayer. And I felt like the Lord called me to step up and to do that. Um, saw some things, not just in, in our city, but also in school and uh, some things that I felt, maybe some injustices, some things that um, that I didn't think were being done exactly right. Now, running the city is such a big job. There's so many things that go well, right? You're always going to hear, you're rare, very rarely going to hear about the things that go well every day, right? You just don't. People will complain about the things that go wrong or that they're not happy about, which is unfortunate, but it's just the way it is, you know. Um, so there's so many things that the people before us have done such a good job. Um, there were some things that I thought that we could step up and maybe do a little, you know, at least my part, we could do better. Um, what I enjoy the most is the interaction with the people, which can be, you know, both ways. Some people come and they're really angry uh, about things that are uh, being done or my views on uh, certain topics, but I like that as a challenge to be able to take the time and to sit down and talk with them and hopefully win them over, you know, and maybe not win them over. We may, we may part ways and still disagree, but at least we had a good discussion. It's okay if you feel a certain way and I feel a certain way, if we can both be adults and keep our emotions out of it, discuss and kind of, I can see your point of view and you can see my point of view and we part ways. That's okay. You know, that's okay. So um, I really do en- I enjoy uh, interacting with our citizens, you know, being a, being a voice for our citizens to also come to me and say, hey, can you do something about this? And the answer is yes. You know, I can uh, most of the time, you know, if it is city related. So I love being a part of the solution, you know, to be able to help out, um, whether it's a dumpster, it's a pothole, or it's something really big, you know. Um, so being able to maybe help our city and make our city better, but being a voice of the citizens. I think that that's my favorite. Well, thank you for helping out our city. Oh, gosh, yes. Okay, um, kind of a follow-up question. What is the hardest thing about being on the city council? <laughs> <laughs> the hardest thing, I think it would be time. Um, it is a, you know, it's pretty much a volunteer job. Uh, we get paid $10 for each meeting, but no more than two meetings. So we get $240 a year. So it's definitely not for the money, right? So it's time. So most people on council, and if you go through all of them, you're going to find out, most of us have a job. Uh, Tom Sherlin doesn't. He's retired. He's living his best life. He has all the time in the world to do this, and he loves it and does a great job. Most of us still have a job that we're doing. You know, most of us own our own companies. So time is really difficult. So the people that typically run uh, for city council or any position, uh, you know, in politics, you do it because you want to make a difference, right? There's, it, that has to be the reason why you run. You know, you really want to make a difference. It takes a lot of time. You know, uh, if you really do care and you really do want to make a difference, it does take time. Meeting with people, like I said, you know, one of my favorite things, but meeting with people takes time. Right, you want to value their time, and but you want to give them the time, and there's so many hours in a day, so I've I've got to manage my office and my team, all my employees, my customers. I have customers to be able to meet with them and talk with them, um, but also enough time to dedicate to the city. Um, I was elected to do a job, so I need to provide enough time to know what's going on with the city. Um, look at all the things that are going on, research it to see what I can do, how I can influence and how I can do help, you know, run it and do better. Um, so time, 
time is time is probably the most difficult. Uh, and again, to prioritize family, it's not just work and it's not just the city. You have work, city, your spouse, your children, your grandchildren, all the things. So, and then you have to protect yourself as well. You know, I've got to allow time for myself to uh, do the things that I have to do. Pickle Paul and go to the gym. So I got to allow time for that too. That so, does seem like it would be kind of hard. It's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. But it's, again, if you're called, um, I think that grace is there and then you're able to do it. Okay, next question. How do city leaders take care of the needs of kids in the community? Well, we like to, we want to provide, um, now that's a pretty broad spectrum when you say kids. I mean, we've got kids all over, right? Um, some that need a lot of help and then some that have great families and, you know, but still we still want to provide you know, all over. So we want us to always focus on uh, what does the community offer? For children, um, you know, whether it's uh, what we call quality of life things, whether they're splash pad, spads, splash pads at parks, um, you know, uh, the <coughs> zoo, the, you know, things to do, you know, that the city can provide because we want to provide a city that when you grow up, we'd like you to stay. You know, we don't want you to move off and go, wow, Amarillo just kind of stinks. They don't have anything that I like to do. Growing up as a kid, I didn't have things to do. And so you want to you go pursue that somewhere else. We want Amarillo to be good, even you know for the children to provide all the things there. Now again, whether it's libraries or resources, um, it just depends. You know when you say children, gosh, um, from small to I mean the things the resources that you probably need are very different. Um, but we we always want to focus on that. In fact, that's one of our. It's a great question because that's one of our big focuses is how do we make Amarillo a place that our youth wants to stay, that you would, you know, possibly either grow up and if you want to have a family, you know, you find a husband and have children and you want to pursue a career and do those things, we would really like you to stay here, you know, uh, so that our community grows and that we have good people here and that we just continue to grow and attract others to, to here as well. So it's a great question that it starts, but we, we want to start with those quality of life things of like, you might think just fun or um, you know good parks, um, things for you and your family to do, so that that develops a good foundation for you later to think, wow, I could raise a family here, and it's a pretty great place, you know. Whether it's restaurants or it's so many things, but that's a great question because that's really what we're focusing on. Because what we're seeing is our population's aging in Amarillo, and we are trying to retain the youth, um, and youth from starts with even younger than you, uh, but then through high school, you know, where do they go to college? And then when they do go to college, or if they choose to go to college, to may go to technical school or whatever, how do we bring them back? You know, and so there's programs put in place so that we can do that. Just like my children, they moved away for a while, and then they came back. That's what we want, actually. You know, we really want them to come back here and have a great life, and so Amarillo can grow and uh, provide all those things, you know, that a family wants. Well, thank you for um, helping us kids out in the community. For sure. And um, our final question is, why do you think it's important for kids to know who our city leaders are and what they do? Gosh, um, one, they'd be way better off than I was because I couldn't have told you anything. I think I knew who the mayor was, and that was about it. had no idea about the form of government, how we operated, anything like that. And I would say, as embarrassing as that is, that's through high school. It wasn't even, you know... You're, you're about to go to middle school. I wasn't even thinking of those things. So good for you that you're already thinking of those things. And, and these organizations, they're phenomenal. It's so important um, just to know because local government is where you have the biggest influence. Right? Your vote matters. It will not matter any more anywhere else than local government. So it's important that you understand how it works and how you can elect officials that line up with how you want your city run whether it's values, uh, uh, their, their fiscal ideas, um, you know, how they handle money, how they, you know, you want to be able to put. And I think the earlier that you know, even though you can't vote, right, you've got a few years to go before you can vote, when you know how it's done, and I will tell you the, the young Republican um, group, they are probably the most knowledgeable of any group. When we went through um, the forums, like the little questionnaires that we go through when we run uh, for 
office. They ask us questions much like this. Um, I wish they were this easy. You know, um, they'd ask about my, my childhood and those kinds of things. Those are easier. But the, the young uh, group, the young conservatives, they were more knowledgeable than any other group, which I love to hear. Um, but it's so important for you guys to know uh, and just to know that you're here and you understand you know, the questions you're asking and the, the government, there's not many like you, I would guess. It's probably in your in your fifth grade, are there many that are interested in politics? I'd say there's like a couple of them. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you're way ahead, and, and good for you, Brooklyn. That's It's amazing. And the more that you can talk, and you will be one of those leaders, right? You will probably run for student council, and you will be in those things. Uh, you will be a leader, and you will influence many people. So that's a great thing. Um, but it is crucial that you guys understand um, our vote. When you look at the people who vote, if you ever look at that, the young people don't vote that much. And when I say young, I'm perspective, 18. You know, the, the 18 to you know 26, they just don't vote that much. And a lot, I would guess that you will never not vote. Every election, that, and the reason is because you understand it, you understand uh, the offices, how it works, and how influential you can be. You know, I would, I would appreciate so much that there was more like you that would actually understand um, and see. And it's, and it's very open. I mean, programs like this, but even if, uh, you know, mom and dad, go to a city council meeting. I mean, they're, the, they're kind of boring sometimes. Sometimes they're not, kind of entertaining. But just, just to get a taste of it and see it is tremendous. So I, I, you said, how important is it or why do I think it's important? It's, it's crucial that because y'all, you guys are the next generation. You're going to be coming up. And the more educated that you are in the political process and what runs our cities and our states and our counties and our government and our federal government is is that's that's where it is. That's who's going to drive what we look like as a nation, as a uh, state, as a county, as a city. That's what's going to drive it. So we need educated youth to know what they're doing, what the issues are, and to go vote and to change our to change or to direct it however it needs to go. Okay, well, thank you for having this interview, and thank you for helping out our city. You're welcome. Yes. Thank you for taking the time and your interest. And that was just perfect. That is exactly why we're doing what we're doing, because we want younger citizens like Brooklyn to learn about our city and, and government here and government at the state and national level. And so wonderful information for all of our kids out there and all of our grown-ups too so yeah. thank you so much for your time absolutely and um mayor stanley started this last time he said he wanted to be able to pick the next one for the interview so <laughs> you get to choose which commissioner should come next for our interview um let's see here let's do let's do josh craft okay let's do will, josh craft we will put out an invitation to josh hey. craft for our next uh, city commissioner interview but thank you so much for Perfect. wonderful wonderful information great job brooklyn thank yeah, you so much job. for being with us today yeah thank all you guys right. for all you do absolutely really. thanks